Taylor. Welcome to episode number two of The Bachelorette Breakdown. If you guys are new to my channel, I obviously have a new series called The Bachelorette Breakdown, which means every week we break down what happened on The Bachelorette. If you guys have not seen episode number one of The Bachelorette Breakdown, I will make sure to link that down below. Make sure to go watch it before you watch this week's video. Last week we went over the 26 contestants that are fighting for JoJo's heart this season. But anyway guys, let's jump into the video. So the first episode of The Bachelorette aired yesterday, and let me tell you, it was pretty interesting. There was just a lot that happened in that episode. Obviously, the episode started off with the introduction of this season's Bachelorette, which was Miss Jojo Fletcher. Again, if you do not know who Jojo is, she was the runner-up to last season's Bachelor. Um, she lost to Lauren B. and did not obviously marry Ben Higgins. But let me tell you, Jojo is one of the sweetest persons ever and is probably one of my favorite Bachelorettes. She is so down to earth and so funny and it's just like, I love her so much, but probably the most important thing that we all care about uh, when it comes to The Bachelorette is the dress for the limo reveal night. Now obviously everyone knows that the first night is usually the night that um, all the men come out of the limo and they meet for the first time with Jojo. And let me tell you, Jojo's dress this season was the bomb.com. Like the color, the sequins, it wasn't too much, it was perfect, she rocked it, it was just A+. It was great. Flawless. Jojo's just flawless, let's be real. But obviously, the one thing we are all excited about is to learn more about the men that will be fighting for Jojo's heart this season. Obviously, we have the brief summary that we found out about last week, but finally, we get to meet all of the 26 contestants for who they truly are. So, we found out a few things about some of the men that either A, I missed while reading their summary, or um, they just never revealed. Um, I think probably the biggest one that we found out was that Jordan, who was the ex-pro football player, is actually Aaron Rodgers' little brother. Yes, Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, uh, his little brother is on The Bachelorette. Wow, like, you really can't find a girlfriend? Really? Can we just also throw that out there? This guy is gonna get picked on so much. Like, any person that has gone on reality TV shows with famous siblings, good luck to you, bro. Really, good luck to you. Also then, guys, I wasn't completely wrong about there being a guy that herds cattle, rides ponies, and works at a farm. There is a guy, but I picked the wrong guy. No, it is not Will, but it is Luke. Yes, he lives on a farm, he raises cattle, and he rides ponies, and it just made me very happy that there was actually a guy that legitimately does that. Another thing that I guess I completely missed um, while reading this guy's summary, um, Ethan, remember the creepy one? That creepy one? Um, he He's an erectile dysfunction expert. You heard that right, yep, yep. He, uh, he works on guys' messed up penises. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. You work with penises. So then obviously our favorite part of episode one of The Bachelorette is the limo reveal. This is obviously when all the contestants for this season uh, first meet Jojo and um, to be honest, I was kind of let down. Usually there are some really, really, really funny ones. I was really let down this season. There weren't really any good ones, like really ones that stuck out to me. I mean, there was a Santa Claus and a guy that came out on a unicorn, but all you men could have tried way harder than that. So a good portion of the guys that came out of the limos this year it had stupid little cheesy lines. There wasn't really anything funny, but um, one of the first guys that came out of the limo that had kind of like a little like skit kind of a thing was Robbie. He came out with a bottle of wine and, and basically what he says is we are going to drink this wine Fletcher style. If you did not watch last season of The Bachelor, when Jojo and Ben went back to Jojo's hometown, uh, and they were visiting her family, there was a part of the episode where Jojo's brothers were like interrogating Ben and her mom was in the background chugging down some wine straight from the bottle. So I thought that was actually really funny, really creative, and that was probably one of the first ones. And I can still remember it, so obviously there was that one that stuck out to me. But it was super funny and I gave him, I, Snaps to him. That was great. A bunch of the other guys came out and they were super sweet like Ali. Oh my god He was so cute, but it was like that really nervous dorky cute and I was like Yee, Let me give you a hug. Let me squeeze your cheeks. You're so freaking adorable. Oh my gosh I like it like hurt my heart. It was so cute. It was like oh ah. Another person that stood out to me when it came to limo reveals was Nick 
Nick came in a full Santa suit. Dressed up as Santa, not even joking. Cause then he came and he's like, I'm Saint Nick, get it? Cause Nick, I thought it was creative. The only thing that kind of annoyed me was the whole entire episode. He kept saying, Joe, 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 Joe. Like instead of ho, 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 it was Joe. Jo I know, stupid and very annoying. And he kept doing it. I'm like, bro, we get the idea, you're Santa Claus. And he kept that Santa suit on the whole entire episode. The whole entire episode. Like, props to you, bro. The next person out of the limo that really stood out to me was James Taylor. I was really, I honestly had very high standards for him knowing that he was a singer-songwriter. Um, but he came out with his guitar, singing in his cute little country accent. Oh my god! I just melted. I was like, I melted into a puddle of cuteness. Like he was singing the song and the song was so cute and he was so nice and he was such a gentleman. Like the whole entire episode, he was so nice and such a gentleman and so well mannered. And I was like, how do you not have a girlfriend? How are you not married and have kids? You're beautiful and attractive and can sing and a gentleman. What woman wouldn't want that? The next person that really stood out to me was Luke. Luke came in on a unicorn. Came in on a unicorn. Came in on a unicorn. And the unicorn's name was Coconut. It was so cute. Cause like Jojo came in with the unicorn head and it was like, they're both from Dallas. They're really cute. Next up, probably my favorite ever was Wells. Now, if you watched last episode, you know I loved Wells. Just by his picture and his biography, his little thing, he's just so cute. I love him even more after this episode. He brought in an acapella group to sing when he came out of the limo. Like, props to you, bro. I would have been like, okay, hey, bye, I'm taking him. I don't need any of these other guys. Like, he's just so cute and so nice. Also, Ethan came out, the reptile dysfunction expert dude. And he was like, hey girly, no, you don't say hey girly to a girl that could possibly be your future wife. You don't say that. But really those were only the main guys that really stood out to me or did something like cute. The one thing that I did find actually very funny while all the men were coming in was if you remember from last week's episode, Daniel, the one that I was for sure that was gay. I'm 100% positive he is still gay. He even made a statement as all the men were coming in. All of these guys are really good looking. If I was gay, I would date them. You are gay, so you could date them. Like literally, he's so gay. My mom even said so too, because I was watching with my mom and she was like, wow. And I was like, yeah, he's gay, mom. He's not straight, he's gay. So after all the men showed up, Jojo obviously went in and was talking with all of them. And you know, with every season comes that one person that is always the one that steals her like right off the bat. Like she doesn't even have time to breathe after saying her statement. And to be honest, the person that stole her first uh, kind of shocked me. Like I didn't think it was gonna be that person but it was Alex, who if you remember, Alex was our short one. We also found out Alex is a twin, but his twin is already engaged or married or something like that, because I was gonna be like, whoa, we didn't want to bring another twin on us for this season? Because you know, last season with The Bachelor and the twin, okay. But um, yeah, he's really short. Like when he came out of the limo and was standing next to him, there was probably maybe like an inch difference. I'm not even joking, he's really short. Like, really short. But yeah, so he was the first one to steal her, which I was like, I mean, props to you, bro. I was I was waiting for it to be like one of the other guys. But yeah, Alex was the first one to steal her. And then after Alex, um, Jordan, who is Aaron Rodgers' younger brother, was the one that actually stole her and kind of was the first guy to have kind of like something between the two of them happen because all the other ones kept going up to her and they were like, oh, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. It's just like, bro. This is the woman that could possibly be your future wife. Get some balls and go talk to her. Like, sure, maybe you're nervous, but don't tell her that. Be a man, do something. But no, yeah, Jordan and Jojo really hit it off at first. And then like, the thing was after Jojo left, he's like, oh, I really wish I would have kissed her, but I didn't. Well, then she went off to talk to Will and Will was the first kiss of the season. And let me tell you, it was a very awkward kiss. Cause you know, they were doing that little like, you know that paper game where it's like, pick this one, you go one, two, three, that one. The one you played when you were like five. And she picked one, it was like, you are gonna be kissed by someone soon. And so they kissed, and it was really, really awkward. 
awkward and it's just very uncomfortable. But then Jordan came back and slid into her DMs and I don't know, that makes no sense. But Jordan showed up again and took her and stole her and they were dancing and then he kissed her. And that kiss was muy bien. Way better than Will's, let me tell you. And Jojo agreed. And then she was like, wow, he has a good butt. And I'm like, hashtag relatable girl, like, same. To be honest, the one person that really disappointed me was Chad. You know how much I liked Chad last episode. Um, the guy's a real dick. Let's just put it that way. He thinks he's way better than everyone. And I'm calling it now, I think he's gonna be like the next Olivia slash Lace of this season, so he's gonna be kept for a couple episodes for drama. Let's just put it that way. And then of course, like I made my predictions, I thought there was gonna be that one person that drank a lot. Um, let's be real, all of the guys there got way too drunk. Like, way too drunk this episode. Like, production should have cut the alcohol, like, right in the butt, because it got pretty interesting. Now back to Daniel, who I told you I don't like. I don't like him. I really don't like him. And if you watch this week's episode and you don't like Daniel, there's something wrong with you. The guy got so drunk that he took off all his clothes and was walking around in just his underpants. And not like underpants, it was more like a thong. Like a man thong. Mmm, no, no, no. He was like, I look so good. And it's just like, you are so gay. And then to make it even better, um, he jumped into the pool. Like, into the pool. Not even, like, it wasn't even like a jump. It was like a into the pool. And I'm just like, you're just literally asking to be sent home. Like, you honestly think you're gonna be, like, you're gonna make it? And then, like, other guys started walking into, like, JoJo's interview with production, and JoJo was like, what the heck is going on? These men are all way too drunk. But then the night continued, more drama happened, people kept getting more drunk, and then Chris Harrison brought in the first impression rose, and you know what? I honestly thought it was going to go to Luke, because before Chris Harrison brought in the first impression rose, Jojo and Luke were having their like one-on-one -on -one talk at the time, and it was going surprisingly very well. And let me tell you, I think Luke is going to make it as a finalist, because he seems like him and Jojo really click, and they're honestly really cute together, and I ship them, and I'm calling it now, I think Luke might actually make it as a finalist. So I for sure thought Luke was gonna get that first impression rose, because Chris Harrison went and put it out there, and, and Jojo went and got it, and I was like, Luke's gonna get the first impression rose, and nope, Jordan got it. Jordan, the football player, got it, and I was like, um, I mean like, there's nothing that seems wrong about you, but then again, last season, nothing really seemed wrong with Olivia, and look what happened. So, but then obviously after Jordan got the first impression rose, the rose ceremony for the night began. But of course, a Bachelorette episode isn't a Bachelorette episode without drama. Now you're thinking, Taylor, it sounds like there was so much drama. How could they put any more in there? Well, you're wrong, cause this is The Bachelorette. What do you expect? It's drama 24-7. But yeah, so the rose ceremony was about to begin when um, the limo showed up and they're just like, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Um, it was Jake, one of the old bachelors. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It starts with a P. He was on Dancing with the Stars. He's been on a lot of reality TV shows. Let's just put it at that. And so everyone was like, oh my god, they're gonna put him in. Is he gonna propose to Jojo Baba. And so, no, he just showed up to wish her good luck and hope that she finds love. And it was just like, wow, you got me there, Bachelorette production. Ooh, gotta like throw in that you think there's gonna be drama when psych there's not. Honestly, the Bachelorette production has become so predictable that it's not even funny. So finally the rose ceremony begins. So obviously, like I said, Jordan got the first impression rose. So then the next person to get a rose was Luke, which I'm happy he got a rose. And then you know what, we're just not gonna go in order because I can't obviously remember what was the order. But Alex got a rose, Ali got a rose, Brandon the freaking hipster got a rose. I don't know why he got a rose, but I don't know. Chad got a rose, which 
Chad also made the comment of he was like, we were making eye contact the entire time during the ceremony, so I wasn't shocked to get a rose. And I'm like, you're sounding like Olivia and Lace. Go home. Thanks. Bye, Chad. Then Chase got a rose. Christian got a rose. Derek with the pretty blue eyes got a rose. Uh, Evan, the creepy man, got a rose, which I was shocked at because I'm like, really, JoJo, do you not have eyes? Do you see that man? Do you know what his occupation is? Do you really want to marry that man? Really? Grant got a rose, which I'm kind of surprised Grant got a rose because I don't know. Uh, James S. the Bachelor super fan got a rose. Good luck with that. James Taylor got a rose, which I'm super excited about because I love James Taylor is awesome. Nick, Santa Claus Nick got a rose. <laughs> Robbie got a rose. Vinny got a rose. Will got a rose. And my favorite Wells got a rose. Also, our buddy Jimmy got a rose. Our flannel friend Jimmy got a rose. And then obviously there was one rose left. And if you have not watched The Bachelor before and know how predictable the production is, you can only guess who got the last rose. Um, yes. Unfortunately, Daniel, yes, gay Daniel, yes, Daniel, the one that took off his clothes and went diving into the swimming pool, got the final rose of the night. Yes, I know you're shocked. I was shocked as well. Just kidding. I wasn't shocked at all because production for The Bachelorette is so freaking predictable. Like, you could even tell on JoJo's face when she went to go say his name, she was disgusted in herself. And trust me, hon, I would be too. Cause that guy is not a good dude. So then obviously at the end of the first episode of The Bachelorette, they do kind of like a recap or preview of what's to come for the rest of the season. Let me tell you, if you did not watch last night's episode of The Bachelorette, please go watch it and watch the last like 10 minutes of it when they do their preview for what's to come next season. There is going to be so much drama. It is unreal. It looks like there's gonna be blood, there's threats. Go watch it for yourself, cause it's kinda scary. I was watching it and I was shocked and I was like, wow, wow. There's honestly no words to describe how dramatic and crazy this season's gonna be. And I love it. But yeah guys, that is it for episode number two of The Bachelorette Breakdown. If you enjoyed this week's episode, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you guys are enjoying this series, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you guys are new to my channel, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. I make new videos every Sunday and Tuesday, and I'm currently working on my goal of 500 subscribers by the time my channel turns two. Also guys, we are so close to 200 subscribers, so make sure to click that subscribe button. I mean... It's free, so you should click it. If you guys are not following me on any of my social media links, such as Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram, those will all be linked down below, so make sure to go follow me on all of those. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below who you currently think is going to be the winner of The Bachelorette this season. Currently, I'm loving Wells. Wells might not win, but Wells is currently my favorite, and I would really like him to win. <laughs> but as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of The Bachelorette Breakdown. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in this amazing world. Remember to always keep doing you, and I will see See you all next Tuesday.